Now Rory Duffy, tell me about Gerald Duffy. So uh, Gerald Duffy was my father, um, he's a teacher by profession, but probably his biggest passion was history and especially local history, history of Mayo. Um, I guess a lot of it comes from um, you know, our family background. So my, my grandfather and grand uncle were involved in the War of Independence and the old IRA. Um, my grandmother, Sarah Duffy, was a was, um, teacher. And very much yeah. into and where did she teach? Um, Nakaruski, um, and I think maybe Glen Mask and other places like that, but I'm, I'm not too sure. Mm. But um, yeah, she was so education history was always like a, a big part of our family and our upbringing. Um, you know, back in the 80s when I was growing up, sat, Saturdays and Sundays were you know spent out in Nakaruski and grandmother and grandfather's house, um. The bits we'd hear about, you know, before we were sent out of the kitchen because we couldn't listen to the adults talking, you know, you'd hear about um, discussions about the uh, War of Independence, about, you know, history of Mayo back in the days. Um, and, you know, th that kind of was the first um, introduction I had to, to local history. And then, you know, you'd have Sundays where when the his History Society, Historical Society was started up here. And, you know, you'd spend Sundays out, you know, doing tours of various historical sites around Mayo and, you know, with people like Dad, um, Kitty Harlow, Johnny Sheila Malloy, John Bradley, John Mayock and, and his wife, you know, and Kieran Clark and other people like that who, you know, really had a passion for local history and, and you know, got. And, um, you know, people people who are involved in the historical society. Um, and getting it off the ground, John Bradley, um, who who lived at the you know the bottom of the reek and and people like that and, and you know even um the Easter Monday down in in Newport every every year to commemorate the old IRA and the West of Ireland and the kind of the War of Independence and um you know it's the, a lot of famous families there you know the Quins, um you know Mister Fee and John Moran um the O'Donnells you know famous Tiernar names. Um, you know, and that, that all came together this year in, the, in their book, you know, and a great, a great book it was, you know, and you'd meet people there. Um, What's and, the name of the book? Um, Go on. Geez, I don't know. It's, um, you know, all, all that kind of stuff was, was part of our upbringing when, when we were kids. And, you know, um, I remember times, you know, hearing my grandmother and grandfather talking about, you know, people like Michael Kilroy and people like that. And, you know, obviously... Um, spoke with great respect. And um, was the uh, historical society set up in this house? Do you think was it? Um, I think I think Dad was one of the founding members, but mm. I'm not sure exactly how it started up. But mm. it it um, obviously there was a group of people that had a had a huge interest in history. I think um, it's there was something to do with like. There was history um, classes, local history classes kicked off in the vocational school. And from that, a group of people came together and obviously formed a society. And um, that led to, you know, things like the Cahir and Amart um, books um, being produced, where, you know, people would write um, articles on local history, collate them together into a booklet and, and release it every year. And that became a kind of a, an annual thing. And, and now it's a, a collection of, you know, lots of, local history and things that happened around Mayo and the, and the environs over the years. So mm. I think, you know, different people have contributed and, and um, it's still going strong. So I think that's, that's a good legacy mm. for, for the people who kicked it off. And it's a good source and record of the local history and, and things that happened. And did your father spend a lot of time with this, did he? Ah, he did, yeah. Like when he wasn't, you know, t you know teaching was obviously his profession, but when he wasn't... Um, when he wasn't teaching, everything was uh, um, everything in his spare time related to history. And even you know, in the nineties, he took off to Minute to do a to do a a masters in local history, and he wrote it on the port of, of Westport. So you know, for him, it was you know it, that was his passion, that was his hobby in his spare time. And um, and know, what did he teach in school? Was he a secondary school teacher? Yeah, he was a teacher in, in the tech in Westport or vocation mm. school. So, and before that, he was a teacher in Swords. Um, so we moved down here in 76 when he became principal. Um, and myself and Keane, both, my brother Keane, both of us went to the tech in Westport. So 
Um, and it, for the last two years, he taught me English. I think he also taught maths. Um, Did he teach history? No. No, strange. No. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I think it was maths and English were his mm. subjects. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I like maths. I didn't like the English. Mm. <laughs> so uh, the history, the, the two big history place. Yeah, the Heritage Centre. Heritage Centre, Center. So, yeah, yeah. So, was he involved in that now? Yeah, he was involved in getting that off <coughs> the, the ground. So he was also on the Harbour Board for many years. Um, and, you know, through that, um, he, was, he was interested in ensuring that the key area was regenerated. I think um, there was a lot of good work put in by the people there. They got a building at some point um, just behind the Angling Centre and, you know, raised the money for that. Mm. Um, you know, I think there was some, a lot of the local politicians would have contributed a lot of fundraising, you know, local and abroad. And, you know, eventually that got off the ground. And I think, again, that's um, it's important to have your local history local. Um, so You're very keen and in, interested in it yourself, yeah? Um, I'm interested in the aspect of, um, like the War of Independence and stuff like that, where Grandfather and, you know, his brother Paddy would have fought in it. So I think, for me, my interest in the history was kind of like ar around that time. Um, because I, I grew up, um, so I was still quite, I was maybe 10 years old when grandfather died but you know as a kid I, I knew him so mm. he was he was somebody that was was in our lives quite a lot at weekends and, and did he talk about the past much did he no grandfather didn't never mention it no no and he was um <clears throat> a very tall man very proud man i think his his view on it at the time and you know maybe if dad would correct me if he if he was here but i think his view on it was that um he had done his job um it was necessary at the time to fight for independence but, um, you know, once it was done, it was done and, and he moved on. And I, I don't believe he... I think had, most of them like, adopted that approach, didn't they? Yeah, but his brother, Paddy, from Clunescale or Lankill, um, who also fought um, in the War of Independence, and I believe Uncle Paddy fought in the Civil War afterwards and actively was involved in politics throughout, um, you know, was, was probably... Um, um, more militant to the mm. end and you know ha had strong beliefs and again you know was, was very um very proud of what he did and i think you know there's 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 um there's two sides to every story mm. so i think grandfather adopted the view that um he he had done his job and you know i think he did a very, and that was very it. good job and um and, that, and you know that was it and but he, he had colleagues like you know tom mcguire who you know from kong and and others who, you know, till till the day they died, they always believed in the struggle for Irish freedom, which... Which is fair, know, which fair is, enough, which is, <laughs> reasonable. Yeah, uh, very reasonable. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that um, one of the things that Dad also did was he he got to interview Tom McGuire before he died, and he was one of two people that was ever granted the interview. And have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's somewhere on video. Is it available? It is. Um... <clears throat> I believe it's somewhere. It's either upstairs in one of the videos, um, or it's 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 definitely mm. recorded. So you were still them old guys. Would they ever meet together now? Or would they have meetings? There's um. So I think there was um there was definitely a fiftieth anniversary meeting. So there's a lot of um there's a lot of recordings of that. Um, a few people that would have been still around maybe for the seventy fifth anniversary um of the Caracandy ambush and so on. Definitely the families um, were there, but um, probably a lot of people died on um, in the 80s. There was mm -hmm. one person the time of the 75th anniversary of the Kerry ambush. Only, I believe, one person was surviving at that point, Rick Joyce, and he actually lived in Chicago. So um, and he was unable to attend. But um, yeah, it's, you know, that's. That's the story. He left a great legacy anyway, hasn't he? Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's brilliant. Like, yeah. And, you know, I think. It's um, yeah, it's important that our history is recorded, mm. and you know I think the stuff that you do also is, is quite important to make sure that it's it is recorded mm. and that it's there for you know future mm. generations. And I think it's also very important that it stays local. So I'm mm. I'm not a fan of of relocating all our history to Dublin or whatever. And I think um, anything that Dad has here and any notes and videos and whatever should definitely remain local. Mm.